January 29, Exodus 7, 1 to 8, 32. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. And Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you. And Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply the, my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I, I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded them. So they did. And Moses was 80 years old and Aaron, and Aaron 80, 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, you then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and did so, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it came a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard grew hard and he did not heed them as the lord had said so the lord said to moses pharaoh's heart is hard he refuses to let the people go go to pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water and you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him and the rod which was turned to a serpent you shall take in your hand and you shall say to him the lord god of hebrews has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that I, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed, until now you would not hear. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. Then the, then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river returned to blood. The fish that were in the river died. The, the river stank and uh, the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his heart moved by this, so all the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink because they could not drink the water of the river 
And seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river, and the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to, Fa go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, behold, I will... I will I will smite all your territory with frogs so the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly which shall go up and come into your house into your bedroom on your bed into the houses of your servants on your people into your ovens into your kneading bowls and the frogs shall come upon come up on you on your people and on all your servants then the lord spoke to moses say to aaron stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams over the rivers and over the ponds and cause frogs to come up on the land of egypt so aaron stretched out his his hand over the waters of egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of egypt and the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of egypt then pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said entreat the lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people and i will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the lord and moses said to pharaoh accept the honor of saying when i shall intercede for you for your servants and for your people to destroy the frogs from you and your houses that they may remain in the river only so he said tomorrow and he said let it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the lord our god and the frogs shall depart from you from your houses from your servants and from your people they shall remain in the river only then moses and aaron went out from pharaoh and moses cried out to the lord concerning the frogs which he had brought against pharaoh so the lord did according to the word of moses and the frogs died out of the house of the houses of this of the courtyards and out of the fields they gathered them together in heaps and the land stank but when pharaoh saw that there was relief he hardened his heart and did not heed them as the lord had said so the lord said to moses say to aaron stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land so that it may become lice throughout all the land of egypt and they did so for aaron stretched out his hand with his rod struck the dust of the land in and it became lice on man and beast all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of egypt now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice but they could not so there were lice on man and beast then the magicians said to pharaoh this is the finger of god but Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as just as the Lord had said. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. For else if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants on your people and into your houses so the houses of the egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand and in that day i will set apart the land of goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of fly flies shall be there in order that you may know that i am the lord in the midst of the land i will make a difference between my people and your people tomorrow this sign shall be the lord did so thick swarms of flies came into the house of pharaoh into his servants houses and into all the land of egypt and the land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies then pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said go sacrifice to your god in the land and moses said it is not right to do so for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the egyptians to the lord our god 
if we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he will, as he will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Intercede me. Then Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Psalm 17, 1-7 A prayer of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give, e give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let, let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have not found and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men, but a word of your lips I have kept away the paths of your the paths of your destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O you who save those who trust in you from those who rise, ag who rise up against them. Proverbs five fifteen to 20 Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad, abroad streams of water in the streets, let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth as a loving deer and a graceful doe. Let her, let her breasts satisfy you at all time and always be entrapped, be entrapped in enraptured with her love for why should you my son be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress matthew 19 1 to 2 30 now it came to pass when jesus had finished th these sayings that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea f beyond the Jordan and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him testing him and saying to him, Is it lawful? Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he, wa that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his, his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, 
except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery and whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery his disciples said to him if such is the case of the man with his wife it is better not to marry but he said to them all cannot accept this saying but only those who to whom it has been given for there for there are eunuchs who were born thus for, from their mother's womb and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men and there are eunuchs who who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake he who is able to accept it let him accept it then children were brought to him that he might put his hand on them and pray but the disciples rebuked them but jesus said let the let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for as such is the kingdom of heaven and he said and he laid his hands on them and departed from there now behold one came and said to him good teacher what good things shall i do that i may have eternal life so he said to him why do you call me good no one is good but but one that is god but if you want to enter into life keep the commandments he said to him which ones jesus said you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness honor your father and your mother and you shall you shall love your neighbor as yourself the young man said to him all these things i have kept from my mouth what do i still lack jesus said to him if you want to be perfect go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me but the when but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions then jesus said to his disciples assuredly i say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven and again i say to you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of god when his disciples heard it they were greatly astonished saying who then can be saved but jesus looked at them and said to them with man this is impossible but with god all things are possible then peter answered and said to him see we have left all and followed you therefore what shall we have so jesus said to them assuredly i say to you that in the gener- that in the regeneration when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory you, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone who has left who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive hundredfold and inherit eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first amen and amen thank you lord jesus